<laughs> Hi guys, so today we are doing a video of... Slizzards. Slizzards? <laughs> We're going to be doing a tank setup video for Brendan's incoming pet. We're actually going to the reptile show tomorrow. Um, and so we are planning on getting him a... They can't hear you, what? A leopard gecko, which is supposedly one of the easiest lizards um, to take care of, which is good. Obviously, we will be doing most of the taking care of and not Brendan, but tomorrow we're going to be going to the uh, reptile show, the reptile super show in Pomona. Uh, the video of that will be on our other channel. Uh, the link is below. Um, so we're going to get a leopard gecko, but this video is actually the pre-video. We're going to be doing a tank setup. We're going to be setting up his tank for the uh, leopard gecko. Now let's get to it. Okay? Yeah! We got a 10 gallon tank, which from everything we've read is perfect for one leopard gecko. So we got a 10 gallon tank. Uh, and the first thing we need to do is attach the heat mat. We have a heat mat and we're gonna attach that to the bottom of the tank to keep the warm side warm. And then the other side will be the cool side. So we're gonna set up that heat mat right now. So the heat mat came with an actual heat mat. One side has a, an adhesive, and that will obviously go down here, it'll stick. And it came with, came with four little tabs, which will, we will put the tabs on the corners of the tank to keep it slightly raised so that uh, it can have a decent airflow so that the tank won't catch, the, the mat won't catch fire. That's what these are for. Keep it raised. Yeah. Could I do one? Sure. It's also a red one. I do the red one. I have to peel the back off. It's got an adhesive. Ooh, it's sticky. And we're going to stick it right here. Now the mat is now attached to the bottom of our tank. We have the little uh, rubber feet attached as well, which raises it off the ground a little bit, and we're good to go. So along with the heat mat, we also have a heat mat thermostat, obviously to maintain a consistent temperature uh, and make sure that it's not too hot for the uh, gecko, uh, as well as not too cold. So we have that. We also have a digital thermometer, which we're going to put uh, near the heat mat so we can kind of monitor that. We'll probably get uh, another thermometer, just sort of an ambient temperature thermometer, so we can kind of keep an eye on that as well. But most importantly is right now is the digital thermometer, and it has a, a little probe that you put in the dirt, so you put it really close to uh, the heat mat. Not right on top of it, obviously, but somewhere in that vicinity, so we know what the temperature is like on the hot side, where uh, obviously he's going to be spending a lot of time. So we will have we'll set up the digital thermometer, and the thermostat as well. There's sort of a big debate on the best sort of ground floor covering for uh, leopard geckos. Many people go the uh, fast sanitary way and put paper towels down there. Some other people use sort of a ceramic tile on the floor of it. Obviously it can be easily cleaned. And then the carpets, I know a lot of people say the carpets they can get their teeth or their fingers, nails, their claws caught in the uh, reptile carpet, so that may not be the best option. Some people use a substrate like this. This is just sort of the Eco Earth stuff, which is the coconut fibers. We're gonna give this a shot, the Eco Earth. Um, and for the wet hide, we're gonna be using a terrarium moss. So we'll put that inside the wet hide. And then for this, the substrate, we're just using Eco Earth. So we're gonna start that. This is the side with the heat pad. Um, so this is gonna be his warm side so we'll put his little hide here little log hide and then his moist hide we're going to put on the other side of the tank over here and we're going to put this little tree in as well uh, in the corner so we ha also have another sort of hide that's not moist that's just sort of you can hide under the leaves and, and the tree see if he likes that so we're going to give that a shot we got two dishes, one for food. It's a little bit deeper, so if you put mealworms in there, they won't just crawl out. Hopefully that'll work. Um, it may be too deep for him. We'll try it. If it is, we'll have to get a different dish. But uh, we wanted something where the mealworms could just crawl out, so hopefully that'll work. And then obviously we just have the uh, Reptorock, which is just for 
water. Okay, so everything is set up. We have his warm hide here, which is the half log. Um, the heat mat is under there. He has a food dish and a water dish. He has his uh, moist hide on the cooler side. Um, and he has uh, a plant, which is also on the cooler side, which you can also use as a hide if he wants to. It's definitely enough room for him to, or her, I guess we don't know yet. We haven't gotten him or her. Um, on this side as well, on the cool side. So there's three hides total, one is plant, one is this log, and then one is the this rock here. I discovered that the thermostat has its own probe, which I did completely forgot about. So the probe for the thermostat is right under the heat mat, or near the heat mat. It's not obviously touching it, but it's buried in the vicinity of the heat mat, so it'll keep the temperature of the, the warm side. And this other thermometer is now buried slightly on the cool side over towards the uh, the hide here, the moist hide, so it's buried under there. So we'll definitely have the temperatures for both the cool side and the warm side. Why don't you give us a tour of the cage, buddy? What's a tour, actually? A tour is when you're going to show us everything that's inside the cage, okay? There's a little uh, hole here that's where the desert's going to hide in. There's no more hide. There's no hide here, and you can just get here and there's stairs with a hole. Yeah. And there's some food in here. With the food, water. Mm -hmm. So this, he can climb on this step and he can drink. And his hiding place is other, another high place right down there. Yeah. You excited to get your gecko? Yeah. So yeah, here is his warm hide. You can go under there. It's a little log. Can you say something? Look at these. these little fibers. Yeah, I got another one. Oh. I'm going to get a bunch of them. Hopefully this is enough room. Um, all the literature we saw said that 10 gallons is enough for a okay. single gecko. And of course the moist hide which we have filled with moss. Moist moss. Damp moss. Um, so he'll have that. Um, hopefully he'll like it or she will like it. And uh, if not we'll make adjustments. That's what it is now. And his name is Pebbles. The warm side is currently 86, and the cool side is currently 75, almost. So if you're going to be doing something similar, getting a leopard gecko, and you're going to be doing a setup like this, this is just the way we did it, um, based on research and, and watching other people's videos, uh, a few of the really, really helpful ones we'll link below. Um, but this is our first crack at it too. So if you guys have any specific tips or advice, if you're a leopard gecko owner yourself or a reptile expert, um, yeah, please let us know. Uh, advice, tips, uh, hacks, things like that. We'd love to hear them. So uh, we'll update you very, very soon as to our new leopard gecko friend. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. You can check out our other channel, Kevin and Krista, where we will be going to the uh, Reptile Super Show in Pomona tomorrow to actually get a gecko. Hopefully we can find a good one. And then we'll bring, it, bring the gecko, him or her, in and introduce him or her to the habitat. So there we go. Right? Uh-huh. Oh. Please like and subscribe. Bye-bye. <laughs>